Frankfurt International Airport Expansion Project $5.7 billion Frankfurt International Airport is unquestionably Germany's largest and busiest international airport, catering to as many as 70 million passengers annually. Besides being the country's foremost passenger airport, it also holds the title of Europe's busiest cargo hub, handling over 2 million tons of shipments just last year. Due to its pivotal role as a major European transportation hub and the continual growth in passenger numbers, a $5.7 billion expansion initiative was initiated back in 2005 to enhance the airport's facilities and augment its passenger and cargo handling capacity. One of the key components of this initiative involved extending the airport's oldest terminal, adding 800 meters in length and accommodating seven new wide-body aircraft stands. This expansion alone increased the airport's annual capacity by over 6 million passengers when it was completed in 2012. Another transformative element in reshaping the airport's configuration was the construction of a new 2.8-kilometer runway in 2011, running from east to west. This addition enabled simultaneous landings, significantly enhancing the airport's aircraft handling capacity. Then, in 2015, work commenced on a brand new third terminal, situated south of the runways on a plot of land that had previously served as a US airbase, but was reclaimed by the airport following the base's closure in 2005. This new Terminal 3 is anticipated to boost the airport's capacity by up to 19 million passengers annually and comes with a price tag exceeding $1.1 billion for its construction. Due to delays attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic, the new terminal is now expected to open around 2026. Moving on to number 8. Istanbul Canal – $10 to $15 billion Located at the strategic crossroads between Europe and Asia, Istanbul, Turkey holds a highly advantageous geographical position. The city straddles the vital Bosphorus Strait, connecting the Black Sea to the Mediterranean and the broader oceans of the world. This natural waterway witnesses more ship traffic than the combined traffic of the Panama and Suez canals. Remarkably, despite being entirely within Turkish territory, Turkey does not reap financial benefits from the strait. The reason behind the situation lies in an international treaty known as the Montreux Convention, which Turkey signed back in 1936 to regulate the use of the strait. This treaty was established to ensure Turkey's neutrality during World War II by imposing strict limitations on the passage of warships through the strait while guaranteeing unrestricted access to civilian vessels. Given that the strait is among the world's most congested shipping routes, often causing ships to wait for days to navigate through it, the Turkish government is planning to address this issue by constructing the Istanbul Canal. This artificial waterway would traverse the European side of Istanbul, essentially transforming it into an island. The proposed canal would span 45 kilometers and is estimated to cost the Turkish government as much as 15 billion USD. Construction began in 2021 with a projected completion time of seven years. This new waterway would serve as an alternative to the Bosphorus, potentially challenging the Montreux Convention itself, according to some experts. Such a development could grant Turkish allies, like the United States, the ability to access the Black Sea and position warships near Russia's borders. Furthermore, Turkey could levy fees on vessels transiting through the canal, potentially allowing the project to become financially self-sustainable in the coming years. Moving on to number 7. Horn Sea 3 and 4 – $19.2 billion In the realm of offshore wind power, the United Kingdom stands as the world's second-largest producer, trailing only behind China. Remarkably, four out of the five largest offshore wind farms globally are situated within the UK's borders. Among this, the Hornsey Project's one and two wind farms are particularly noteworthy, ranking as the second and first largest in the world respectively. Both Hornsey 1 and 2 are situated in the North Sea, approximately 80 kilometers off the coast of England. Together, these two wind farms boast a combined power generation capacity of 2.6 gigawatts, enough to provide electricity to as many as 3 million UK households. The expansive scale of these wind farms covers an area spanning 870 square kilometers, which is roughly equivalent to half the size of the city of London. Despite the substantial contribution of the UK's offshore wind farms, totaling up to 14 gigawatts in power generation, they are still a considerable distance away from their target of reaching a combined capacity of 50 gigawatts by 2030. Consequently, plans are underway for the development of newer and larger offshore wind farms within the country. Hornsey 3 is one such project currently in the construction phase, with an anticipated completion date of 2027. This endeavor is slated to be situated east of Hornsey 1, encompassing an area spanning 700 square kilometers. Upon its completion, Hornsey 3 is expected to generate 
a whopping 2.8 gigawatts of power through the deployment of 230 individual wind turbines, surpassing the combined capacity of Hornsea 1 and 2. Meanwhile, Hornsea 4 is in the planning stage and is scheduled to cover a 600 square kilometer expanse northwest of Hornsea 1. Construction on Hornsea 4 is projected to commence in 2024, with a goal of becoming operational by 2027. Continuing with the discussion of offshore wind farms, Denmark has a rich history in this field. In fact, the world's inaugural offshore wind farm was constructed in Denmark as far back as 1991, marking a pivotal moment in the advancement of this technology. Today, wind power constitutes nearly half of Denmark's energy production, making it the global leader in this regard. As part of their commitment to further enhance their clean and renewable energy sources, the Danish government is embarking on the most extensive construction endeavor in the nation's history. By 2030, Denmark aims to create the world's first energy islands, which will link extensive offshore wind farms to Denmark and its neighboring countries. Denmark's energy islands will encompass two sizable offshore wind farms located in the North and Baltic Seas. In the North Sea segment, an artificial island will be developed to serve as a central hub with a projected capacity of up to 10 gigawatts, sufficient to supply electricity to 10 million European households. Meanwhile, in the Baltic Sea, the island of Bornholm will function as the second hub, boasting a capacity of 3 gigawatts. Once completed, the Energy Islands Initiative is set to augment Denmark's wind energy capacity by a factor of 7. Construction of this ambitious project is anticipated to commence as early as 2024. Number 5. European Route E39 $30.6 billion Norway's challenging coastal geography, characterized by rugged mountains and thousands of small islands, has historically posed significant navigational difficulties. The European route E39 aims to address this issue by providing a more accessible route along the Norwegian coast. However, even with the E39 in place, the 1300-kilometer-long route does not offer a continuous path along the entire Norwegian coast. This is because the E39, while designated as a single highway from Denmark to central Norway, comprises numerous distinct sections separated by extensive bodies of water. Traveling the entire route necessitates the use of seven different ferry connections and can take an entire day or longer. Nonetheless, the situation is set to undergo a dramatic transformation as the Norwegian government plans to have the more than 20-hour travel time. Their strategy involves the complete elimination of all ferry connections by constructing a series of tunnels and bridges that will bypass the water crossings along the route, creating a seamless path from Aalborg in Denmark to Trondheim in Norway. A crucial component of this E39 upgrade is the Rockfest subsea tunnel, which will link the city of Stavanger to Boken in Norway beneath a 15-kilometer expanse of water. Once completed, this tunnel is poised to become the world's longest and deepest road tunnel, spanning 27 kilometers in length and descending nearly 400 meters below the surface. Construction on the tunnel commenced in 2018 and it's currently projected to open in 2033. The project also envisions the construction of four separate floating bridges that will carry the E39 across some of Norway's largest and most magnificent fjords. One of these planned bridges will cross the Bjornafjorden, spanning a total of 5 kilometers above the water. Upon its completion, this floating bridge will claim the title of the world's longest, more than doubling the existing record. Number 4. Grand Paris Express – $38 billion The Paris Metro stands as one of the most heavily used metro systems worldwide, accommodating as many as 4 million passengers daily. It is renowned for its iconic entrances, constructed in the Art Nouveau architectural style during the early 1900s. Paris, being one of the world's most popular tourist destinations, grapples with severe traffic congestion, ranking among the worst in Europe. To address this escalating issue, the city government has made it a top priority to establish infrastructure that can better serve the millions of commuters passing through Paris each day. A pivotal project aimed at alleviating Paris's worsening traffic is the Grand Paris Express, the city's most extensive transportation initiative, intended to enhance the reach and connectivity of the already intricate Paris metro system. The project entails the creation of four entirely new metro lines and the extension of two existing ones. In sum, the Grand Paris Express is set to lay down 200 kilometers of new tracks and introduce 68 new stations, capable of accommodating an additional 2 million daily passengers. Construction on these new lines commenced in 2015 and is currently underway in phases, with an expected completion date extending to 2030. Number 3. Hinkley Point C Nuclear Power Station 
$47 billion. Nuclear power plants are well known for their reputation as being both expensive to construct and costly to decommission. However, if managed effectively, their advantages can outweigh their initial expenses. When the proposal for the Hinkley Point C nuclear power station in the United Kingdom was first introduced in 2010, it elicited mixed reactions from the British public. Nevertheless, with substantial financial support from both French and British energy companies, the prospects for the new facility appeared promising. Hinkley Point C represents a new generation of nuclear power plants designed to replace the country's outdated, expensive and inefficient facilities. Initially scheduled for completion in the early 2020s, it was intended to boast a total capacity of 3.2 gigawatts, sufficient to meet 7% of the entire nation's energy demands. However, the construction encountered numerous setbacks that extended its completion date by eight years and led to a cost escalation exceeding double the initial estimates. One contributing factor was the withdrawal of one of Hinkley Point C's financial backers in 2013, primarily due to escalating construction expenses resulting from the 2011 Fukushima disaster. The COVID-19 pandemic further exacerbated the project's already existing delays, introducing supply chain disruptions and reducing the workforce on the site. Presently, the project remains under construction, with its estimated cost reaching as high as $47 billion, more than twice its original price tag, and the completion date pushed as far back as 2028. Number 2. High Speed 2 – billion The introduction of the high-speed train connection between London and the Channel Tunnel in 2007 marked a resounding success. High Speed 1 completed on time and under budget, substantial reduced travel times between London and Paris. Given its remarkable achievement, the British government sought to create a second high-speed trail line that would link the British capital to major cities in the north. In 2009, the Department for Transportation embarked on planning for the second high-speed railway, aptly named High Speed 2. High Speed 2's construction is divided into two phases, one connecting London to Birmingham and other extending from Birmingham to Manchester and the East Midlands Parkway. As of 2020, the estimated budget for the entire project has soared to $132 billion, making it the most significant transportation investment program in the country in over a century. Construction work on the new high-speed line commenced in 2020, involving the construction of viaducts and tunnels to traverse diverse terrains. The project is anticipated to reach completion sometime in the early 2030s. Number 1. Trans-European Transport Network – $625 billion The European Union is renowned for its extensive and seamlessly interconnected network of roads, railways and airports, facilitating convenient cross-border travel among its member countries. In fact, 27 European nations are part of the Schengen area, where travel between countries is largely devoid of border controls and functions as a unified jurisdiction under a single visa policy. In a bid to further interconnect European nations and streamline travel, the EU has developed plans for the creation of an all-encompassing transport network spanning the entire continent. The Trans-European Transport Network is a long-term undertaking encompassing roads, railways, airports, seaports, waterways and telecommunications infrastructure, solidifying the EU status as a singular interconnected entity. The project is structured into nine core network corridors, covering all major population centers throughout Europe. Estimated at a cost of up to $625 billion, the project's envisaged completion date is 2050. One noteworthy aspect of this ambitious vision is the Fairmarn Belt Tunnel, linking the German island of Fairmarn to Lolland in Denmark. Commencing in 2021 and slated for completion in 2029, this tunnel will become the world's longest road and rail tunnel, significantly reducing travel time between Copenhagen, Denmark and Hamburg, Germany, as well as facilitating continental European connectivity. Another compelling facet of the project is the Mont Cenis Base Tunnel, traversing the Alps to establish a high-speed rail link between Italy and France, part of the broader Line Touring Rail Link initiative aimed at integrating both countries' rail networks for improved trade and travel. This 58-kilometer tunnel is set to claim the title of the world's longest rail tunnel upon its expected completion around 2030. Which of these projects are you most excited to witness? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. If you'd like to explore more similar projects, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.